Hello YouTube, Reddit Math here, and welcome back to some very bloody Jagged Alliance 2. Now, some good news, there's, there's some light at the end of a tunnel here, as it turns out that at the end of the last combat, when I gave the prompt for first aid, I was unconscious, which is why I was not eligible to be a first aid provider, but it turns out that I do actually have a first aid kit here with about 80% durability left. Now, we're not quite out of the woods yet, considering we still have several characters that need patching up, uh, including Dimitri, Fox, and Grizzly. So I need to be quick with this to not take unnecessary damage, but I'm gonna go ahead and pop back into the sector and yeah okay she's ready with that let's go ahead and start patching grizzly yes and we'll go ahead and get okay. dimitri headed this way you called all right and now i think i want to go ahead and use this on dimitri first as i don't actually think fox is bleeding i forget i forget yep. again yep. you you can forget that's fine okay that takes care of him and then fox we're down to... Ooh, okay. Didn't quite get her fully patched up. She's only missing a couple of HP. So I'm really hoping... Oh, that was unexpected. I'm really hoping that she won't continue to bleed. Now, we'll come back to that in just a moment, but uh, we're being interrupted with a meanwhile prompt. Uh, anytime we completely take a city, we're going to get to see the reaction of our adversary here. So we'll go ahead and check out what the Queen thinks of our liberation of Chasina. What is it, Elliot? <clears throat> Actually, Your Highness, it is rather bad. How bad, Elliot? And might I add that my nerves are especially edgy right now? Your Highness, these foreigners, these mercenaries, have overrun Chitzina. So far, however, ours has been a valiant effort. I am not interested in valiant efforts. I am interested in maintaining my power and making money. I can't make money if those mines are not mine. Don't you see? Elliot, you idiot! And as for those mercenaries, well, no. Obviously, they are more experienced than I had anticipated. Gather my advisors, Elliot. I'll send these pathetic rebels and their goons a surprise they are not likely to forget. You are becoming synonymous with trouble, Elliot. As you command, Your Highness. This is why you never wake anybody up at 1 o'clock in the morning to give them bad news. I mean, they're just going to be cranky. Alright, so... We've got a surprise headed our way. That's... that's nothing good. N nothing good is, uh, is going to be headed our way to surprise us. So... We're gonna take a little bit of a withdrawal here from our current position. Uh, you can... Look at this on the bright side as some hit and run strategy, but uh, I don't think we're going to be able to stick around in Shitsina, largely just due to our squad's condition. Without medical supplies uh, to get us back up and healthy, what we're probably expecting here is for troops to go on the march out of Meduna. Uh, so it might take them a day or two. We could harden our position here and you know be prepared to to fight them, but we don't have anything to heal up with. We're low on supplies and ammo and everything else, so I think it makes the most sense to get out of dodge while the getting's good. Now, with that in mind, there are still a few things to do in the city, so we're going to want to go ahead and do that quickly uh, while we still can, and then even though we're pretty severely injured, uh, we're going to have to to head out. We're probably going to end up falling back to Drassen and the airport to wait on our supplies to arrive. Uh, I believe I sent them with standard shipments, so they may still be a day or two away, but 
It's not exactly like the road there is safe or anything, so it may take us a while of juking and jiving uh, just to make it intact. Uh, we'll go ahead and drop back into Chesina, and as the, uh, the highest of our leadership skills, I am going to be nominated to go around talking to a few people. So we're going to head over here and also What's up? well your condition ain't so bad. I'm you could right. probably stand to kick in a door. Uh, I think we already kind of checked the other houses and nothing was really going on in them. I don't think there's going to be too much going on in this one either. You got my uh, ear. Was there uh, anybody named? He is named. Actually, uh, Welcome. let's have. I am Yoni, caretaker and abiding servant to the temple of Chitsina. Let's have Ira check out Yoni. Uh, so he's got a little bit to say about the city of Chitsina. Uh, we'll be friendly to him. He's a nice old man. Feel free to tour the ruins. I ask that you respect the heritage and tranquility of Arulko's wonder. Please, do not fire your weapons, or otherwise disturb the grounds. You will find yourself pretty much alone. Hardly anyone comes here anymore. Once, it was the pride and joy of Arulko, a destination for families on weekend outings and tourists from around the world. Since the Golden Chalice of Chance has been removed from Jitsina, people have tired of looking at stones. It was the chalice that drew the crowds. To touch it is to be blessed with life's fortune. Centuries old, encased with the finest jewels, it is the spiritual lifeblood of the people. It is what they hold dear. To have it once again in its rightful place would rejuvenate the well-being of the nation. The chalice is in the showcase for the enjoyment of the wealthy who live in Balim, and she did not want the peasants of the countryside to prosper from its blessing. However, it is locked up behind heavy security. Greatness would be bestowed upon the one who returns it to Chitsina. To have it here once again may very well unite the country. And the plot thickens. So we've heard of this chalice before. The Kingpin was also interested in it, uh, the chalice in Belim. And we get a little bit more backstory about what exactly that chalice is. Now, it's certainly all gem encrusted and quite valuable, but it seems like Yanni wants it more for the cultural heritage of the country than anything. Uh, let's see if he has anything more to say. It is tragic that Rulko finds itself in such a predicament. Alright, just a, a little bit of flavor text, really. Um, we're going to be done with Yanni for now. We get a nice history log update. Uh, we may have already broken his rules about not shooting or Standing disturbing by. the grounds a little bit. But that's okay. Uh, we've got some more people to talk to over here. And uh, let's up? go ahead and get... Bull headed on his way. What's up? Oh, I'm like right about there. And then uh, we'll have Coyote talk to this fine young gentleman. I uh, got to meet you, John Kuba from Cleveland, Ohio, the gateway to the Great Lakes. Um, you're a little ways away from Cleveland, John. I'm afraid we really messed up good. Mary and I were supposed to be going to Aruba. My wife booked the tickets through one of her travel agent friends. Didn't know we were in the wrong country till we landed. Well, that's not quite true, John. Paula told us to check the tickets and make sure everything was okay. You checked them, John. I specifically remember you checking them. Mary, please, I'm trying to talk. I know the ticket said Arulco, but how was I supposed to know that that's not how the Arubans spell Aruba? I mean... These people speak Arubic. Anyway, that guy Pablo at the airport didn't tell us nothing about any war. He even went on about all the tourist attractions this country has to offer, including this pile of rubble. My husband has no appreciation for history. I wouldn't trust that slippery man to park my car. 
Now, I'm stuck here without a safe way to get back to the airport in Dresden. I can't wait to get my feet back onto American soil. I was wondering maybe uh, if you can help. C could you give us a military escort to the airport in Dresden? I'm sure uh, somehow or other I can compensate you for your efforts. Now that just might be something I could help out with. Uh, let's go ahead and escort John and Mary. Now, they join our party, but we we don't exactly get yeah. full control over them. Like, I can't go into their inventory. Um, they're holding a little bit of money and nothing else. But I can move them around Standing now, by. which is right. nice. And I'm going to go ahead and do that, yes. mostly to get Mary out of the way of What's this up? chest back here. And then we're going to send Bull in, gotcha. check it out, maybe pry it open, see if there's any delicious goodies inside. So... Uh, John and Mary unfortunately misinterpreted Aruko for Aruba, you know, because they speak nothing. Arubic there. Oh, man, nothing. Okay. I was really hoping for like a magical, mystical first aid kit or something to be there. Uh, so they somehow found themselves in the middle of a war zone and have requested a little bit of assistance getting back to the safety of Drassen's airport. Now, I think that is going to be something that we might just be able to lend a hand with. What I'm gonna do here is we're just gonna redistribute our militia across both sectors so that they can equally defend each. I'm gonna take like a couple of hours to rest as uh, some of our characters are pretty exhausted, including myself here with uh, only 70% of my maximum energy. Um, the injuries aren't going to help our ability to travel any, so I think it's important that we heal up uh, as much as we can just by resting. Uh, we'll probably wait until like maybe the break of dawn and then start heading out before we get pinned in by uh, any of Didrana's troops. Let's also do... Oh, nice. There's actually some pretty decent equipment here. Uh, we're going to end up doing quite a bit of just like maintenance stuff. In this episode, I'm not expecting to get into uh, any full-blown combat or anything like that. Uh, 131 rounds, not bad. I'm thinking some hollow point ammo might come in pretty handy, actually. And so, let's get him like a mag and a half of that. And a half mag of standard like steel core. He's got the shotgun and a little bit more ammo for it. Fox. I'm thinking of who uh, we want to give the Type 85s to. And um, I think it may be Dimitri and Ira can end, uh, could both end up with those. Um, let's go ahead and pass Dimitri's handgun with no more bullets in it somewhere else. We'll give that to Bull to put in the pack. And then... Dimitri's got this. It's going to take, what, 7.62 by 25, which is like a submachine gun caliber. Quite a bit of ammo for it laying around, so that is fine. And uh, you know what? We'll spread this through some like back pocket action. The submachine gun rounds not going to fit there, but I could get three more of them there. And then basically the same for Ira. We can kind of rely on the submachine gun's ability to uh, spray and pray to alleviate some of our lower marksmanship abilities. All right, I'm pretty okay with that. Uh, there's also an HK 40 cal, um, pretty awesome. Actually, USPs are a fine handgun. Uh, so we're gonna wanna go ahead and snatch up one of those I'm gonna try to get out of this sector with as much of this stuff as I possibly can, as uh, we are likely gonna be losing control of it sooner rather than later. And equally, let's go ahead and get her with uh, an Agram 2000. I'm not actually super familiar with this uh, kind of submachine gun. High marks and styling that makes it popular not only with Eastern Bloc police forces, but their mafia counterparts as well. Okay, so more of like an Eastern Bloc uh, some machine gun, which might explain why I'm not super familiar with it. Interestingly enough, it does use a fairly standard, like, western 9mm, uh, though. 
And so she can get two full mags of it. Awesome. And then there's some uh, 30 cal ammo that we don't really have much use for. Does everybody have... I know we've gotten flak jackets for everyone. Steel helmets, though. Bull could use one. And is anybody else helmetless? Nope. We appear to be good there. All right. Uh, final bits. Let's see who has enough uh, space left over for a little uh, submachine gun ammo. That should be fine. And then... Anything else? We'd have to have a large spot. We could take the helmet. And she's got enough space for the flak jacket. Okay. We'll go with that and um, we'll just leave the ammo here. Maybe it'll come in handy later. Uh, everybody who needs to is taking some nap time right now. We'll give it uh, maybe like two to three hours. Am I the lowest on energy? I think I may be, yeah. All right, so as soon as I am at like, say 80 should be okay. And it only updates like at the hour. That'll so show him. I guess it's to 78. We'll give it to 4 a.m. and uh, then we'll get cracking out of here. And there we go. So I am the only one still resting, but I'm up to 82%, which is definitely enough for me to get a move on. I'll just be a little groggy. Never really been a morning person. You can't blame me. Um, what path do I want to take out of here? So I'll move really quickly through the city. Um, and you know what? So uh, we'll I'm on it. plot a route like that into uh, San Mona. This is an opportunity to dodge around any troops if we happen to run into any. And uh, we'll go ahead and set out. Now, we do have Ira. She does have some uh, lovely scouting abilities. So I'm hoping she is our ace in the hole for uh, being able to dodge any troop movements on their way. Uh, also, we've you know only been resting a couple of hours. So I would think at most these guys are like here. Um, it should be... Maybe nightfall before they arrive anyway. in uh, in Chitsina. So we should be okay on that front. Um, once we can get into San Mona, I think we'll take a brief trip by Tony's to sell a few things. And then hope for a relatively uneventful trip back to the Drassen Airport. At this point, I'm pretty much just excited that we're all still alive. Getting the wall here. Gotta sleep. Okay, so he's complaining. I think he'll probably give us one more sector, though. Uh, if we can get here, I think we can get him into San Mono before he just collapses on his feet. Um, so that should be fine. That's exactly where we're going to stop. We'll give it like a night's rest. Yeah, that worked out perfectly. Also, that sector is occupied. So glad we didn't go through there. I think the actual road, as you can kind of see on the map, comes down through here. Um, so I think it actually would have taken us through here. Glad we sort of stayed off of it. Um, I'm here. What next? All right. So once we get into the town, uh, it's like one o'clock in the afternoon. That is prime time to have been arriving. And as long as there are none of the queen's troops here to surprise us, awesome. There are not. We can just all make our way as a group over here to Tony. And we'll take a look at who might need to sell a few things. Uh, so we'll want to offload like, the steel helmet from Grizzly. Bull's got quite a bit of stuff to get rid of. Fox has got the two flak jackets. Okay, so pretty much everybody uh, except Dimitri. Maybe uh, except Dimitri and myself, I think. Yeah, everybody else will. So, uh, we'll want four characters to head in and talk to Tony, sell a few things. He'll be uh, a little grumpy with us if we're not buying anything, because uh, that, of course, means all the cash is flowing I don't in the believe I needed to see that. wrong direction from his standpoint. Uh, as you can see, the results from our last battle are still present. Uh, bodies are a little decayed. Crows are enjoying it, so, you know, that's something. 
Um, you call? It is actually uh, possible to get some target practice on these guys. I know. Um, uh, I don't know if I'll call it an exploit, but there's some like really gamey stuff that you can end up doing uh, using the crows to uh, sort of repeatedly get sneak attacks and uh, kind of grind out a bunch of your attributes that way. You are becoming a regular. Yep, yep. Bet you're here to see Tony, right? He's in back. Awesome. Then um, it's not the only thing that allows you to do that. Um, you can also like run around in a sector like completely overburdened, and your strength stat will increase fairly quickly. Um, there's a few things like that in yes. the game. I don't tend to buy into them, or at least not for this playthrough. Point out what it is you are interested in. All right, he's got uh, a few new weapons in stock. Nothing super amazing. Uh, Beretta 92 FS. That's actually pretty decent, although the condition on it is quite low. The that's selection this time of year is excellent. I also uh, really do actually like the Spectre. Hmm. Interesting. Um, I think I'll pass for just right now. Uh, we'll focus on just offloading our supplies. He unfortunately is not going to carry what we could really use, which would be medical supplies. Although he does have uh, like a bevy of flash suppressors. Eventually, I uh, I, I would want to have every weapon equipped with uh, flash suppression. Um, greatly enhances your ability to not get shot at hmm. night. Let me see what we have here. Uh, he won't take body I regret, armor. I am only interested in weapons, only weapons and their accessories. Okay, well that's fair. Um, I tell you what then, as long as we're here, we'll go ahead and buy a flash suppressor from you, and we'll pop it on our new submachine gun here. All Very right. good. You know where to find me if you are interested in doing more business. Indeed I do. Uh, that'll be it for Fox. I'm into it. Let's see. What's so up? Bull, Bull, you have guns to sell. I'm on it. We'll get you in here. And you'll be the one to make him grumpy with uh, these Makarovs. And um, I think I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the Desert Eagle. Uh, it's such a non-standard ammo type for where we are in the game. Uh, 357 is just really difficult to come by. Um, and it's kind of a clunky weapon overall. Um, I prefer the increased number of shots versus uh, the single high-powered rounds. So, Point out what it is you are interested in. We'll get rid of the hmm. two Makarovs. We have here. There is value to this. I will pay a fair price. Decent, um, like 245 and Desert Eagle, and then we might as well offload the 9x18 ammo for it. We'll hold on to the 9mm. Now, the deal is done. Anything else? Yeah, he's not super thrilled about that, but I am seven hundred and eighty-three dollars richer. Very good. You know where to. I do. I do. I'm Go ahead it. and get him out of there, and we'll stick that in our main wallet. All right. Who else do we? Have? You got my ear. Ira. Um, I actually kind of really like the HK USP. Do I want to offload it? I might hold on to this and end up giving it to like one of our uh, other troops Standing that doesn't by. have a particularly great gun. Yes. Um. Standing by. Standing by. I already sold one of the 357s. I'm still like completely out of ammo. Uh, you know why not? Okay. We've got uh, Grizzly rocking a pretty fantastic condition HKMP5 A4. He's been using it for a while. Uh, if we do end up switching him back to a pistol, you know, we've got something like the HK 40 cal. Uh, we could always give him one of those. So we'll sell this as well. Hopefully, get a good price. Point out what it. Hmm. Yeah, Let 44. Let me see what we have here. There is value to this. I will Lovely. pay a fair price. The D. Very good. Yep. yep. You know. All right. Same dialogue. Okay, and uh, just. Hop back in here for a quick overview of everybody. And I think that was pretty much everything we wanted to get rid of. Um, we've still got some flak jackets and Kevlar. 
that we can't offload. Uh, you know what? Ira is going to go ahead and sell her 38 as well. It's like the most pointless gun. Um, yeah, there's no reason to hang on to that. So let's go ahead and get uh, Ira you in got here. My ear. And she will be the last one. And then we're going to let our uh, guys get a little bit of a rest break. And then hopefully smooth sailing back to Drassen. I'm is, on it. Is the goal, anyway. Um, if we can get there, then we're probably looking at maybe a couple days rest. Hopefully the medical supplies aren't too far behind us. And uh, then we're probably looking at the fall of Chitsina relatively soon, like in the next day or so. In. All right, uh, 38. Hmm. Let me see what we have here. Worth like just as much as the there Desert Eagle. That's kind of silly, actually. Price. Oh, he doesn't do holsters. Okay, he doesn't do any of the load-bearing equipment, just the guns and ammo themselves. Fair enough. Excuse Man knows me, what he likes. Your stuff. Oh, the deal is sorry. done. Anything else? I know, I know. That's fine. Very right. good. You so I'd say that was totally worthwhile. Um, I, I didn't make note of exactly how much money we had beforehand, but uh, I'd say we cleared a couple of grand off of just selling some unneeded weapons uh, back to Tony. So that will totally work for me. All right, now we're looking at getting another rest break in here. And I'm probably still going to be, as the most injured, I think I'm probably draining the most energy moving around. Uh, so I'm at like 37. Yeah, like lots of guys are basically full. I'm just... The enemy is present. Nope. I'm just sucking it up, uh, moving around with such grave injuries. Um... I would love to be able to auto-resolve. Unfortunately, they don't have any medical supplies, so if they take any damage in the auto-resolve, they'll die. Uh, which means I'm going to have to end up going to the sector so that, you know, Biff and Flo can bravely command our troops while cowering inside of the uh, the bar. I'm not going to force you guys to watch this with me, though. Uh, this will be like the third or fourth time this has happened so far. Uh, these guys are just dutifully training a replacement militia to kind of butt heads against the grinder of Deidreana's forces. We'll go ahead and skip to the other side of this, and uh, hopefully we'll have a little bit more momentum in what is going on with our troops. And welcome back, guys. So the defense of the Drassen Mine went... Okay, uh, we lost about four militiamen, killed ten of Didrana's troops, so I'd say that's a pretty fair trade. Uh, we're also racking up like a pretty decent haul in this sector of guns and ammunition specifically, uh, so I don't think small arms are going to become a problem anytime soon, uh, so that's nice. Uh, we've still got a little bit of resting up to do before moving on with these guys, so uh, we'll go ahead and just speed up time a little bit. Really, uh, again, just sort of looking for Coyote's energy um, to get up to, to traveling distance. He was only able to make it like one, two, three, four, five squares. One, two, three, four, five. So we could get into Omerta and maybe rest there for a turn uh, before pressing on. They've got a pretty decent line of troops sort of happening over here. Uh, so I'm thinking we may not be able to sneak through this without uh, having to get ourselves into a fight. Uh, did notice something and went ahead and paused. So we've spotted some troops approaching Chitsina. Uh, each one of these little blips with like the corner that's kind of shaded there, I believe is representative of 10. Um, so that's, that's real not good. Uh, we're looking at like 60 guys approaching that's probably not something we could have repelled even had we stayed in the town. So uh, I'm not exactly super disappointed about leaving there. I'm going to say that was probably the right decision to have made. Uh, I would expect they're probably going to hit them either before nightfall or a lot of times uh, the enemy... Yeah, they did get in before nightfall. Um, a lot of times they'll end up camping out and waiting uh, until daybreak again. Uh, which would have been nice. We might have gotten a, like another tick of sector income from it, but that's fine. Uh, we'll go ahead and okay this, and we're gonna see, yeah, ten versus sixty. 
Uh, this is gonna go swell for us. Uh, I'd actually be surprised if these militia managed to kill even a single unit. Go ahead and speed things up. Oh, they did manage to kill a single unit. Ha! They they didn't make it out unscathed. This ain't no fun at all. Now, of course, losing the mine sector reduces our daily income. Also, uh, as you heard from Razor there, you know his uh, morale also took a, a hit from that. Everybody else is still doing pretty okay. Um, I guess Razor just really had it in for that mine. Um, Fox and Ira are a little bit low as well. But, uh, you know, we'll persevere. Things will go on. I, uh, I, I think we'll end up being okay. We know sort of what's in store for us as we come back into Chitsina later, though. And it's certainly not going to be an easy fight. i tell you what. Uh, with the amount of time this has ended up taking, I think we're going to go ahead and break this one up here. Uh, next episode, we'll probably be doing the hopefully exciting conclusion to uh, John and Mary's trek uh, over here back at Adrasen. Hopefully it's not that exciting because uh, I don't want them to get into a uh, combat sector. Um, they definitely have no ability to fight back and that would be very bad. So uh, we want to get them as safely and quietly back to the airport as we possibly can. Um, we should be able to do that next episode and then probably just as soon as our supplies uh, show up we'll, we'll start healing everybody up and uh, getting ready to secure Drassen and then I don't know we might make a like a move on Chitsina again or we may just leave it for the time being with its well fortified troops that are in it and uh, head down to Cambria uh, but that'll be a decision for another time I hope you guys enjoyed this episode if you did feel free to subscribe for more videos daily leave a like or a comment if you have anything to say about this or any of my other episodes and I will catch you guys next time